Uh, interesting clip here that I'm going to play for you guys in a minute. Courtesy of Joe Rogan's podcast recently that he did with um, Burt Kreischer. Somebody who I've Kane said on this channel, I'm not a fan of. If anything, like, you know who kind of represents, like, um, what was I going to say? White privilege. <laughs> Addison Ray and Burt Kreischer, right? They're going to skirt through or sell through their entire careers. On, you can't really say Burt Kreischer, Addison, Addison, Addison Ray, because at least he's talented and he can actually, you know, he's a supreme stand up comedian, right? Away from all the, you know, wheezing and the, you know, uh, 45 days sober, only the days I wasn't drinking, and the insistence on bringing up his wife and children on podcasts every single day, and, you know, the flipping stories all about me and all that sort of stuff. Like, take away all the, bu the, the bullshitting, Burt Crash is a sick comedian like a proper top tier one right sorry about that but um of course on podcast i'm just not a fan of the dude everything sort of has a center around him he has to one up things all the time he constantly interrupts um the the wheezy laughing is just a bit cringe like I, whatever i'm not i'm not a fan of it but they had a very cool in, little interaction with each other on the joe rogan podcast where essentially joe rogan uses an opportunity to kind of heap praise on brendan Schaub, somebody of course i featured a lot on my channel in general um and who's somebody a lot of the internet has decided is a bit of a dumb dumb right and they're not really that big fans of him if you go and look at the fire and the kids subreddits big up all the homeless cats out there um they're not really the biggest fans of the guy and it's pretty evident to see why if you spend half an hour on that subreddit why they wouldn't be fans of him and i think it's okay not to be a fan of people and i think that's why the, the the point i was trying to make it's all right to hate on somebody that you don't know because you don't know them right people will say this a lot they'll be like oh yeah you should meet him no he's only the cool guy man. i know him i know him it's like cool you know him but i don't the only way that i know this person is through this news article this clip i've seen this story i've read that's all i know about this person right i've only know that so i'm allowed to form a judgment a partial judgment even a full judgment on what i know if it gets rewritten later on down the line that meet them up and I, i'll pull a joe budden do you know what i mean what joe budden always does he criticizes somebody the moment he meets him up he's all pally pally flicking it out for the gram i will do that in a heartbeat too but until i meet the person i'm always going to just go with what i see the information available and it's fairly in again fairly evident if you spend half an hour on the sub on the fire and the kids subreddit you will see that Ben and Schaub is a bit of a piece of shit, right? Like, in his own way, right? Everyone's got a piece of shit in them, but he's clearly, like, a piece of shit. And I think he's... And I, and I think the issue that he has in general, unlike people like Tana Mogo and Trisha Paytas, I was thinking of even, like, a DSP. No, DSP is not a good example because I think he's more similar to, to um, Brendan Schaub in that way, but definitely in Tana Mogo and Trisha Paytas sort of way, they recognise how much of a piece of shit they are and they use it to their advantage. They kind of lean into it. Whereas with Brendan, I think he's got in his head that he's a decent dude or a good dude. Of course you are, because you're a good dude to Brent, to Joe Rogan because, yeah, he's Joe Rogan. You're a good dude to people that you employ because, yeah, you employ them and you need them. But to everyone else in terms of interaction, in terms of how he acts, he obviously, I won't say not a good dude, but I can see how people don't like the guy. And I think it's sort of disingenuous to assume that people just don't like him only because they don't know the dude. I think that's what Joe Rogan kind of says in the clip. And I just, I don't know. I've, I've always had a hard time with it. I don't really understand it. I think maybe because, again, I've grown up on the internet. I've been part of Forum Coach. I've been part of Tumblr. I know how mean people can get online. And it's never affected me, ever for the good or for the bad, especially because I've been always putting myself um, out there in terms of social media presence for the best part of my adult life. And, again, I'm not as well known as these other dudes. I understand I'm not getting as much back from people as much as those guys. But still... There should be an understanding or an acceptance that you're never going to be anyone's, everyone's cup of coffee. We're even seeing that with Joe Rogan, right? Joe Rogan, I think, is maybe one of the most, I wouldn't say safest, but he's quite middle of the road when it comes to podcast people, just entertainment figures in general in the world of content creation, right? He's sort of middle of the road. Maybe in recent years, because of his whole COVID talk, because people have kind of gone off him a little bit. Me personally, it's definitely been all the rich guy talk and uh, just the... Um, uh, the lack of, I think, self-awareness that definitely comes from money because it kind of it kind of withdraws you from society because you don't need people as much because you've got a hundred million dollars plus from Spotify, which I completely understand. But I think you should be allowed to hate somebody and to not like what they do just because of how they are right from what you've seen of them and it should be perfectly fine no one should kind of sit there and think oh man these guys wasted their time why do but it's like it doesn't waste it's it's a sort of it's a it's a source of entertainment it fills up your time 
Um, it's maybe fun to laugh at people sometimes, especially the ones that you don't like. It makes complete sense why they would do it. Do you know what I mean? Especially the people that are on that subreddit all day long. I definitely understand why. But anyway, here's Joe Rogan basically eulogizing over Brendan Shaw. Big up the homeless cats for the clip and saying why he thinks he's such a good guy and why he likes him so much. And then I'll kind of comment it on the other side. He's um, he's a great dude. He really is. And he's a fun guy to be around. That's why all his friends love him so much. You yeah. Know, like people don't like him because he's, he's, first of all, you know, whether you judge his comedy or judge his podcast or judge whether, you also have to judge how he looks. And he's a beautiful man. And it's a real problem for people. Guy. He's a beautiful man. And he's like six foot five. Great head of hair. He's <laughs> built like a fucking Someone Adonis. It really, really, is. It really it makes people uncomfortable. Me included. I'm his friend. <laughs> He just has massive advantage. And the, the, you're going to hate on him. But he's a great guy. If he's you just the know sweetest him, guy he's a great in the guy. World. And I saw him getting hurt. And I was like, he doesn't really want to do this anymore. But he's doing it. So, I think part of the reason why people hate Brendan Schub a lot is because it's twofold, right? Because I think there needs to be an acceptance, I think, with most people or with some adults out there, especially people that work normal jobs and actually live the real full life. You would known, you'd have known if you've gone through your travels and gone through your career trajectory and friends, you know, lost some, made some relationships, broken up, extended some, you know, lost connections with some loved ones that you didn't really care for in the first place, right? But regardless, right, you would have known across your time in life or across your journey in life, you would have known or come across people who have been very undeserving of whatever success they've gotten. They've just happened to luck into things. I think of somebody very similar to this sort of story. It's weird one to make connection, but think of John Jones, right? He has become successful or maintained a level of success despite his many fuck-ups, despite his many flaws. Obviously, there will come a time when he won't be able to... Um, he won't be able to get away with it, quote unquote, but he's been able to get away with it for the majority of his life, not because he's lucky, not because he's been touched by God or whatever, or because it's like his purpose or his, no, not because, not because he's done it intentionally, but because it's just pure luck, right? Let's say that, yeah, let's go back. Just because it's pure luck. That's why he's been able to kind of skirt through life that way. And there's no denying that pretty much Brendan Shaw wouldn't be the person that he is now without that Joe Rogan co-sign. And the disappointing thing about it, Jerry and Cosa, because, you know, people say, oh, so what? Jerry and Cosa is Jerry and Cosa. And if he was your friend, you'd love it too. Of course I'd love it. But the only really sad thing or the disappointing thing about Jerry and Cosa with Brendan Shaw specifically is that he hasn't really used it to kick on in a way that would make you think, okay, cool. Now he is kind of, I wouldn't say self-made, but he's kind of solidified himself and he's got to where he's need to get to and he's doing the best, you know, what he can do with his abilities. If anything, he's regressed a little bit from the Fox days. No, he's not a little bit, he's regressed a lot. And he's constantly, especially when he does the Below the Belt show, you're constantly reminded, you're like, wow, man, this guy legitimately gets paid money from a, you know, from a proper network they cut him a check every month to sit there and basically read through wikipedia fight cards and not really analyze fights not really recap fights properly mispronounce people's names and just be completely i wouldn't say um tapped out but he sort of phones it in and it's disappointing more so because he's a former ufc heavyweight right top 15 rank top 10 rank, i'm not sure which one it was uh, a fairly you know at the time he was fighting the standard was fairly high it wasn't maybe as good as it is now but it was still a good standard um, he obviously had that pub very public spat with Dana White where they didn't like each other for some legit reasons. He had some really good insights on the business of the UFC and how it should maybe go forward. Um, you know, there was real good scope for him to be a really interesting sort of person to go and get your MMA news from because of the experience he's had. Because not a lot of people can say they were legit UFC former fighters. Not a lot of people can say that they're a legit comedian. All these, like, all these things that sh they should add to his kind of understanding or how or how to of his understanding of the sport or how to articulate himself he doesn't do he doesn't take advantage of and it gets back to the thing of like i say before most people can recognize when life just isn't fair right when somebody like a Bert, sorry like, like a brendan Schulb comes around who quite clearly I wouldn't say he's undeserving but he's clearly not um he's clearly only there because of the network of friends that he has which is a benefit a great i'm sure he wakes up every single day and thanks to lord jesus christ that he met joe rogan because like i said i don't think he'd be the person that he is now without that joe rogan cosign it definitely allowed him to make tens of millions of dollars over the years and drive a purple porsche i mean he must be laughing about it every single day but those reasons are pretty easy reasons to not like somebody especially in comparison to people in his own 
career or you know um area of kind of yeah in his in his kind of interest in terms of profession wise when it becomes a stand up comedian it only makes sense that if you spend all your time following all these stand up comedians and you're hearing them talking about busting their ass going to open mics doing the road struggling for ages and then getting a break after 10 12 years it's only natural for you to then look at the person who got a special after 3 years and it was complete trash couldn't take the feedback from the back of it turned everybody in that that kind of gave him negative feedback into trolls or constructive feedback into trolls and is the most prickly self-absorbed kind of guy now at the moment where you just can't stand anything of his content that's where i kind of think it's a bit odd but again um i understand if your friends were to do it and you've met him in real life he must be like you know a gentleman i'm sure he must be a cool dude to hang around with especially if you're in la and you've got something to offer i'm sure he's going to be very very nice to you but in general I think if you don't know the dude and you just see clips of him on the homeless cat subreddit, so it's fine the kids subreddit, you should be allowed to form your opinion that way. You should. You should be allowed to say, like, you know what, fuck this guy, not for me. You should be perfectly fine. And he should be fine too to say back to you, yeah, fuck you, I'm going to keep making this money. That's the thing that he forgets to do. He's so kind of wrapped up around, you know, inoculizing himself from any sort of feedback that isn't something that he likes to hear. Like, look what happened to Ariel Hawani stuff. He didn't have a way to articulate himself and to rebuttal what Ariel was saying. And he just got to a point where he just stopped replying. Just stopped replying, kind of cut it out, covered his ears, covered his eyes. La, 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 it's not happening. And that's what basically he's done with this, even with his comedy going forward, right? So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't get it. I get it some ways. You know, again, it is what it is. You've got to protect your friends. And if he's getting a lot of stick online, I understand it. But it's clear why people hate the dude. His comedy isn't great, but he gets all these big platforms. His podcast now has gone complete shit. He does do some, you know, you know, some sucky stuff at the moment with some people. And maybe there's also, there might be some people also, again, I'm not American, so I don't know. But maybe there might be some guys out there also who have like a bias or they kind of have something against him in general because he kind of reminds them of somebody they grew up with in school. Maybe he was a jock, the bully guy that kind of roughed you up a little bit at lunch that you always hated. Maybe, I don't know, there might be an element of that. I doubt it really. Um, dudes don't really hold on to stuff like that for that long and kind of, it, or if they do hold on to it, they just internalize it. They wouldn't kind of um, show it in that way in terms of writing on the Fire and the Kids subreddit every single day. But again, what do I know?